Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video we're taking a look at some very cool battles in the Open Master League, featuring a Pokemon that I don't know if I've ever seen used before in Masters, and that is a level 51 Perfect IV Shadow Sneasler. These battles were submitted to the channel by a member of the community, Danky Chan, so many thanks for the battle submission. Shadow Sneasler is going to be a poison and fighting type Pokemon with the moveset of Shadow Claw, Aerial Ace, and Close Combat. It's definitely more of a pick for fun than for climbing, but this trainer has some very fun sets with it. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches. Hopping to the first match, picking up a great lead Kyogre into Ho-Oh. The opponent save switches into Dialga, and Dialga is going to be answered with Landorus. The opponent is going to be shielding up the Sands here Storm. They're going to try and make a play for a switch advantage, but as long as Landorus uses shields as well, the opponent does not have an opportunity to make a play for swap whatsoever. Landorus will fire off the Sands here Storm, opponent is going to let that go, and then will pick up the knockout. Ho-Oh is going to be able to get quite a lot of energy farming down to Landorus, but to do so, they're going to have to give up their final shield as Stone Edge would otherwise pick up the knockout. They're going to leave with a massive amount of energy. In comes Kyogre, opponent farms up to the max energy, and they're going to fire off their charge attack. It's the Brave Bird that connects. We see a switch into the Sneasler, looking to get ahead on energy. The opponent is going to fire off another Brave Bird. In the back, they have Zygarde. Zygarde farming up energy and going for the Crunch. Crunch is going to be resisted here due to the fighting subtyping. Sneasler able to withstand the damage and make it to the back-to-back -back close combats. Let's see the damage onto the bulkiest Pokemon in the Master League. That actually does some pretty nice damage. After two close combats, Zygarde is deep into the red. In comes Kyogre looking for the farm down but unable to get it. Zygarde makes the crunch, so Kyogre is forced to fire off the Surf and pick up the knockout. It's going to be a race, Kyogre versus Ho-Oh, and Kyogre not only withstands the Incinerates, but makes it to the Surf, KOs the Ho-Oh, and takes the win. Great lead in the next match, Kyogre in his Suian Avalug. Opponent safe switches into Dialga, which will immediately be answered by Landorus. Landorus firing off the Sandseer Storm as soon as it gets it. I really like the undercharge play. As the Landorus, you're always going to go for the one shield farm down, so you may as well optimize it and get as much farm as you possibly can. So in this case, exiting down a shield, but with the ability to fire off multiple Sandseer Storms into the Avalug means the opponent basically loses the entire Avalug or they're forced to give the shield back. And either way, you should be hopefully be in a pretty good spot. Sandseer Storm number one is going to connect. That does just under half of their HP. Sandseer Storm number two is going to get the shield from the opponent. They're going to get a big farm down, but their energy is debuffed. They'll have to switch in the back is Palkia, and Palkia is going to be answered with the Shadow Sneasler. Shadow Sneasler is going to be shielding up as the opponent fires off the Aqua Tail. Sneasler farming up quite a lot of energy here, going for the Aerial Ace bait. The Aerial Ace is going to be shielded by the opponent. The opponent tries to go for the farm down, and that's going to cost them. Sneasler, close combat. Get that Palkia out of here. Back in comes the Avalug. Avalug with all the energy in the world, but two Rock Slides do not knock out Kyogre. They go for Rock Slide number one, and that's just not going to cut it. Opponent sees the writing on the wall and concedes the match. Slightly favorable lead in the next match, Kyogre into Xerneas, and guess what? It's another Dialga safe switch. Oh my goodness. Landorus firing off the Sands here, and again going for that undercharge. Really nice to see the consistency in gameplay. The opponent is going to be able to grab the shield advantage, but the Landorus is going to have a truly insurmountable energy lead as it goes to battle versus the Xerneas that's most likely being sent back in here. The opponent is going to be waiting the timer, looking to send in the Xerneas. Xerneas is immediately going to be met with back-to-back -back Sandseer Storms, throwing one of the move, demonstrating very nice charge attack timing, looking to farm up, and throwing just before they're able to make it to the close combat. So the opponent is now going to be double debuffed. The Xerneas goes for the close combat, the close combat would come decently close to knocking out, so we will see the shield. Looking to farm up energy here, saving a ton of energy and getting the catch of the close combat onto the Shadow Sneasler. Not only is it resisted, it's heavily debuffed in the back. It's a Dragonite, and Dragonite, these Dragon Breaths are extremely oppressive damage. Firing off the Aerial Ace, can Sneasler make it to Aerial Ace number two? It's going to be close, and the Sneasler taking advantage of every hit point it has able to make it to another Aerial Ace and force a shield from the opponent. 
Dragonite exits with energy. In comes the Landorus. Landorus is going to bait with the Sandseer Storm, and the Sandseer Storm gets the shield. Going for another Sandseer Storm. This is not going to knock out, but the opponent is rapidly running out of HP. Their Dragonite is now going to be met with the Kyogre. They're debuffed, they're forced to switch out, and they lose charge attack priority. What a devastating sequence for the opponent. They had so much energy, it was debuffed, they had no way to use it without switching out, and then losing charge attack priority and losing all that energy. Picking up a decently neutral lead in the next match, Kyogre into Mewtwo. Mewtwo gonna over farm and fire off just before the surf is reached. Psy Strike does quite a lot of damage. Opponent is going to make a very nice catch as they're able to catch the surf onto Dialga. Dialga to be answered with the Landorus. Landorus farming up and going for the Sandseer Storm just before the opponent is able to make it to the Iron Head. Going to full charge the Sandseer Storm and it is just able to pick up the knockout with one more Mud Shot. But back in comes the Mewtwo, able to win charge attack priority over the Landorus, and we will see Landorus committing a shield. Landorus wanting to apply some pressure onto the Mewtwo and potentially grab shields back. The opponent is going to commit the shield, continuing to farm up with the Landorus. Opponent is going to save energy on the Mewtwo and instead send in Zacian. Zacian to be met with a Sandseer Storm. Sandseer Storm number one, immediately there followed by Sandseer Storm number two. This is going to be getting Zacian into the red. We now see the switch into the Sneasler. The opponent is at minus two attack. Do they have wild charge? They do, and the wild charge does so much damage, even at minus two attack. Shadow Sneasler, so glassy. Getting the farm down, exiting with the close combat. That is clutch. This close combat is resisted, but it's going to hurt. The opponent is forced to commit the shield. In comes Kyogre. Kyogre will be met with the Psy Strike. But you can just no shield this and win the game with Landorus. The pacing on Landorus is just terrific, and the opponent realizes they do not have a win con and concedes the match. Great lead in the next match, leading Kyogre into Ho Oh. Opponent safe switches into a Shadow Lugia. So far, the opponent's team is extremely weak to a potential Hisuian Avalog. The Shadow Sky attack is going to be no shielded by Kyogre, who builds up to the Origin Pulse and baits with the Surf. The Surf bait gets called. We now see the switch into the Shadow Sneasler. Shadow Sneasler is going to be able to make it to an Aerial Ace, and the Shadow Lugia is low enough that this should be able to pick up the knockout. The opponent is going to be able to send back in the Ho-Oh, and these incinerates are no joke, absolutely melting the poor Sneasler. Sneasler is going to fire off the Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace not going to do a ton of damage. Ho-Oh cannot quite get the farm down, and Sneasler makes the close combat. This is a resisted move, but it's a very powerful attack, and Sneasler is able to get Ho-Oh deep into the red health. You can send in Kyogre here. You're going to have to commit the shield, as the Brave Bird would obviously KO, but if they Brave Bird, then the Waterfall damage is going to be able to knock out. In the back is Zygarde, banking the Surfer later and sending in the Landorus. With only one Pokemon left, the opponent has no way of resetting these continued attack drops from the Sandseer Storm. They're going to go for the Crunch, and we're going to see an immediate shield from the Landorus, understanding that if I shield here, I can apply debuffs, and they have no way of resetting these debuffs for the rest of the game. This Sandseer Storm is again going to be no shielded opponent, still holding on to these shields. Opponent firing off their crunch, hoping for a potential debuff. The crunch does absolutely nothing. They do, however, get the debuff. Landorus firing off yet another Sandseer. Opponent is going to start shielding up. Landorus makes it to yet another Sandseer, and this will be getting the opponent quite low. The opponent is going to expend the final shield switch into Kyogre, and we do see the combo play. This Surf is going to get the opponent low, and now it's a race. Dragon Tail versus the Waterfall. They do not want to risk it, so they're going to fire off the Crunch. The Crunch does not KO. The Zygarde gets the farm down on one HP, but one Mud Shot from the Landorus means game over for the opponent. Absolute nightmare lead in the next match, leading Kyogre into Dragonite. Kyogre throws a waterfall. We see the save switch into the Landorus. Opponent is going to stay in this matchup, and the opponent fires off their charge attack, giving Landorus a mud shot for free. Landorus shields up the Dragon Claw, going for the Sandseer Storm. Dragonites love to call these baits. Will the opponent call it? No. They get worried about the Stone Edge. They shield the bait, and now this is the Stone Edge. They've already shielded once. Are they willing to shield twice? They are not the Stone Edge Connects. And this team that is triple weak to Dragonite 
has basically neutralized the entire Dragonite. In comes a Solgaleo. Solgaleo is going to get a pretty nice farm down, and the opponent goes for a Psychic Fangs right away, showing that they are not running Solar Beam. And this is very, very playable for Kyogre. Opponent goes for yet another Psychic Fangs. The Psychic Fangs plus Fire Spins will actually add up over time. Solgaleo, an absolute menace, wanting to guarantee a knockout here, going for the Origin Pulse, and the Origin Pulse is going to pick up the KO. Looking to switch into the Sneasler in the back. It's a ho -Oh, and that's not what the Sneasler was hoping to see. Sneasler would have loved to see a Dialga to close combat, but instead, it's ho -Oh. The Aerial Ace will be no-shielded. Sneasler firing off yet another Aerial Ace here. The opponent still holding onto that shield, and they're going to use it here. Sneasler able to hang on on one HP and make one final charge attack. It is going to be the Aerial Ace, and does that put it into one Waterfall range? Kyogre, the Waterfall does go through. The opponent went for the Sacred Fire. Kyogre gets the farm down. In comes the Dragonite, and the Dragonite will get knocked out by the Waterfall. There's a very cool pick from the opponent on the lead in the next match, leading Kyogre into a Master League Annihilate. Annihilate, I imagine this matchup is probably slightly negative for it just due to the fact that Kyogre has a massive stat product. Kyogre is going to stay in here, over farm, and commit the shield as the opponent full sends the Shadow Ball. Kyogre is going to return fire with the Surf. Surf will do a solid chunk of damage. Opponent is going to let that through. They're now going to switch into Reshiram, and Reshiram will immediately be met with the Surf. Surf only hitting for neutral. Opponent is going to let that through. In comes the Landorus. Landorus going for the Sandseer Storm. And Sandseer Storm will pick up the knockout unless the opponent commits the shield. And they will commit the shield. Landorus farming up. Opponent is going to fire off the Fusion Flare. Even at minus one, Fusion Flare is a very powerful charge attack. Landorus continuing to farm up energy here. And the miscount. Oh no. Accidentally miscounting. The opponent makes it to the Fusion Flare. That will pick up the KO. That's extremely unfortunate as Landorus goes down with quite a lot of energy. In comes the Sneasler, and oh my goodness, in the back, the opponent has a Mew. This is a matchup I never thought I'd see in the Master League. A Master League Mew versus a Master League Shadow Sneasler. We see a switch into Kyogre. Opponent is going to fire off energy here. Let's see what the Mew is running. It's running Wild Charge. That picks up the KO. In comes the Sneasler, and it all comes down to this. Can Sneasler tank a Wild Charge here? The Wild Charge. The Sneasler is able to hang on. It's a simultaneous KO, but the opponent with Pokemon left alive in the back takes the win. We see a familiar lead in the next match, Kyogre into Mewtwo, a very neutral matchup. I would typically prefer to be the Kyogre in this matchup. Mewtwo does have the pacing advantage, but of course Kyogre has a massive advantage in terms of the fast attack pressure outputted by Waterfall. The opponent is going to be shielding up the Surf, continuing to farm up with the Kyogre. Opponent firing off yet another Psy Strike, choosing to let this through. Instead, gonna send in the Sneasler. Oh, look at the Psycho Cuts go. These are double super effective Psycho Cuts, but looking to get an energy advantage on the Sneasler. Sneasler with a ton of loaded energy. What is the opponent gonna send in here? They send in Kyogre. We see an attempt at a close combat, but unfortunately the game forces an overtap. Close combat will be no shielded. Going for the Aerial Ace and a switch into the Olga. Does the opponent know Sneasler counts? No, they do not. They respect it as if it's a close combat. And now Landorus is looking very deadly in the end game. Landorus going for the Sandseer Storm. That does massive damage to the Dialga. And as long as Landorus can exit this matchup with energy, this should just be a win. So Landorus is going to be committing the shield, looking for the farm down here of the Dialga, getting the farm down, exiting with charge attacks loaded, and the opponent is going to resign the match. Hopping into the final match, leading Kyogre into Solgaleo. Opponent safe switches into a Shadow Apex Lugia, and Kyogre is going to stay in here as there's not really an amazing counter switch on the team to a Lugia up energy. Lugia going straight for the Sky Attack. We see the no shield by the Kyogre. No baits here from the Kyogre going straight for the Origin Pulse. The Origin Pulse is going to connect. We see the switch into Sneasler, and Sneasler gets the farm down. Close combats will do a solid chunk of damage to the Solgaleo if the opponent decides to send it in. They 
send in their final Pokemon, which is Zygarde. Zygarde just absolutely everywhere in the Master League. Zygarde will go for the crunch. That's, of course, not going to knock out. And Shadow Sneasler at the back-to-back -back close combats. Firing off the close combat opponent is going to commit the shield. But guess what, Zygarde? There's more where that came from. Another close combat is going to connect, getting Zygarde below half HP. Choosing to wait out the clock and then sending in Kyogre. Opponent is going to have to fire off a charge attack here into the Kyogre to pick up the knockout. We're going to see a shield from Kyogre on the crunch. Kyogre is going to be able to make it to the surf. The opponent still does have the Solgaleo in the back, but Solgaleo is not a big fan of Landorus. In comes the Landorus as the opponent sends in the Solgaleo. Landorus is going to be firing off the Sandseer Storm that will be shielded up by the opponent. They have farmed up to a potential Iron Head. We will see the No Shield by the Landorus. The opponent is just going to go for the Psychic Fangs. Continuing to farm up. Opponent going for another Psychic Fangs. We will see a Shield by the Landorus. So this is actually going to be a bit awkward. Because this Landorus, its defense has been pretty heavily debuffed. Firing off another Sandseer Storm that is going to connect. Landorus is going to be forced to fire off another Sandseer. This will pick up the knockout. The opponent still has the Zygarde, and the debuff is still applied. We see the switch into the Kyogre. Can Landorus get the farm down? No! The Zygarde survives on 1 HP, picks up the KO, and it's a heartbreaking loss. All in all, having a perfect IV Shadow Sneasler is an incredible flex, so definite props to Danky Jan for powering it up all the way to level 50, getting the best buddy on it, and testing out of the Open Master League. It goes without saying, this is definitely a spice pick as far as the Master League goes, definitely not a Pokemon that's recommended for climbing, but if you get a Shadow Hundo, you may as well max it out, so definite thank you to Danky for sending in these battles and getting to see those close combats land. Even when they were only neutral, those close combats can put a hurt on these Master League Pokemon. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.